Hi, this is John Brock with BrockWorks. In the last video, we generated a 3D site model, existing site model for this lake home project that we're working on. And so what we're going to do right now is we're going to model the foundation for this project so we can put that, see how that compares with that existing site and create the excavated site. All right. So this is the lower level floor plan or the foundation plan for the house. And you can see it's got a 10 inch foundation, concrete foundation wall, and it's on top of a 10 by 20 footing. Now, the way I'm gonna do these foundations is a very uh, expedited way with a plugin. It's, it's a paid plugin uh, called Profile Builder 3. Uh, it was maybe 79 bucks or something like that. Best money I ever spent. I've been using it for years and I literally use it on every single model um, multiple times a day. All right, so a profile is, it could be a two by four. It could be a piece of crown molding. It could be baseboard. It could be gutters. It could be anything that you're wanting to uh, extrude, like the follow me tool on steroids. Okay, so you could pick your profile and then you just simply trace around a path. Then you could also assemble, create assemblies of multiple profiles and components. And I can show you all that in one assembly that I've created for this foundation. So I'm going to click on that icon and what you're going to see is this is a, a 10 inch by nine foot foundation concrete wall that has a two by six sill plate on top that has anchor bolts embedded in that uh, that are within a foot from the end and six foot on center, which is code in my market. All that is got waterproofing on the outside. Uh, it's sitting on a 10 by 20 footing that has two runs of rebar in it. There's drain tile and gravel to the outside and there's expansion joint to the inside. So that's a ton of stuff in this one profile. Now you can either select this tool, right? this is the icon here to build assembly and you could trace point to point to point. But from my experience, this foundation is so cut up that's a little sluggish when you're doing that many things on this one line. The tool next to it is build along path, which is going to be a lot faster in our situation. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and trace that first. Now this has, according to the architect's plans, is a uh, retaining wall that's, that's going perpendicular to the house. So we're going to just kind of trace around this perimeter. Again, you can do this with the tool, but it's having to render every single wall as we go. And I'm telling you now, this is faster to do it this way. So this actually has a front porch uh, mechanical room under the front porch. I don't like that from a waterproofing standpoint, but that's another video right there. So, all right, so then this garage has a garage under it. So a, a structural steel system, uh, we use a system called Metwood uh, that will support the slab. And um, so we're gonna go from there and then we're gonna wind up here, whoops. We're gonna wind up at the, uh, we're gonna wind up at the framing on this wall. So I'm just gonna infer this wall and take it to the framing. So now I'm gonna triple click on that path. So now you can see I've got everything, that entire path is selected. So I'm gonna use this tool here that is called build along path. And then boom, I've got that entire foundation and as quickly as it took me to trace around the, the house. So really, really powerful. All right, so there's our foundation walls. We have a stem wall at the walkout basement, which is a little short wall that gets down to frost depth with our footing. I'm going to model the slab first. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to change my view to monochrome because that black expansion joint is really hard to see. I'm also going to pop off this floor plan temporarily. And I'm going to take my line tool and I'm literally just going to start drawing lines around this perimeter. Just easier to see without that black face that really obscures it. So I'm creating my path. All right, and then when I get to, this is the place underneath the garage. Oops, get to this other side here. Now when I get to this other end, I'm gonna cut the floor plan back on and I'm gonna simply just go to the framing line to this interior portion of framing. All right. The sheathing in their case goes to the outside. I like to do my slabs with the sheathing going uh, flush, but I didn't design this house. So we go to here, 
here. Okay, you get this other side here. Like I said, we're just simply tracing around a path. And we'll get to where we close. You can see how that floor plan is a little bit off. Now we have that face there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my, um, my face style back to shaded with textures and that way we can see everything's supposed to look. So now I've got this face here that is the slab, okay? Now one thing that I need to do is I need to take this entire assembly that we created there. I'm gonna move that down four inches because I traced along the slab height and this shows the bottom of the foundation. So I'm moving that down four inches and then I'm gonna take this slab face and I'm gonna pull it down four inches. Now my slab is sitting on top of the footing like it's supposed to. Now I'm gonna triple click on this and then I'm going to sample this concrete texture here and paint that with the concrete texture. So there's my concrete slab. Now that I've got it all, whoops, I didn't triple click. Now that I've got that, I'm gonna make that a group, okay? I'm gonna put it on my layer or my texture. For my texture, I have a basement slab concrete, okay? All right, so the last thing I need to do is put the, found the stem wall foundation in, but I'm gonna leave that off for right now just so we can kind of jump back into the site just to see how we, how we compare. So I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna redock my profile builder. All right, then I'm gonna come back into our site and this was the existing site that we modeled, all right? Now, I didn't design this house. If it was me, I would put the garage on the high side of the property. I always would, it would, I default to that. So in this case, you can see how this foundation wall is really, really tight to grade right here. And, but we have to fill this up. This whole garage has to, you know, this grade has to build up because you're driving into that garage right there. So we've got about four or five feet. Let me see here, if I measure this. We've got a four inch slab going on top of that. And we're already four foot three to the ground, which means we're about four foot seven to the slab. So here we're a little bit high. For here, we gotta fill this up. But I can tell right now, this is supposed to be a framed wall right here. Uh, as you can see from here, this is supposed to be a framed wall. So. In my experience, this will never work. This wall, this concrete wall should continue onto this corner. So these are the kind of lessons that you learn when you're 3D modeling versus just following a set of plans. So if I'm a builder out there and I go to put this foundation in, I'm gonna have a mess. It just doesn't fit the grade. So I don't know why anybody wouldn't do this kind of evaluation. I think if it was me, I think I would adjust that grade. I think we're too high right here. We've got too much water coming down onto that corner. So I would want to take this site and I'm also going to find the existing contours and I'm going to take the site 2D. And so I'm going to take each of those. Let's do this. I'm going to show you another little thing. Let's select this little, this is one of the contour lines. I'm going to right click on that. I've got selection toys plugin, free plugin from TomTom, Tom, selection toys. And I'm going to say all active on the selected layer, selected layers. That's choosing all my contours and I'm going to hit G, which is my grouping. So I've grouped those. I have my site grouped and I have my 2D site plan grouped. And that's pretty much everything that has to do with the site. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to move that site down so that the house is more out of the ground. It's going to help this corner here. It's not going to help this a whole lot, but it's going to help this, uh, this whole cut area in here, uh, I think. So I'm going to select this group that is the, let me cut off the existing site just for a second here. So I'm going to select this group and I'm going to select the site plan group and I'm going to cut the existing site on and I'm going to select it. It's important that you take everything that's involved with that site and move it all at the same time. Otherwise, you're going to find out later, oh, I forgot to move this or forgot to move that. So I'm going to, I'm going to go eight inches. That's, I'm going to try that at first here anyways. I'm going to move all of that down eight inches. And what that's done, in my opinion, that's helped this corner out here. 
and hasn't really hurt us here, but it's only helped us with this slab. Okay. All right. So now we can see we've got some issues here. Um, I think we can make this this blowout here for the slab work out okay. We're not too far out of the ground right here. That's not bad. But where we are hurting is this one walkout wall where you can see they've got a window here that's a five and a half foot tall window on this corner. I mean, that's way in the ground, right? Which is not going to be good. All right. So that's how we get the foundation and has, as it compares to the existing site. So what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to excavate to the excavated site so we can see what kind of volume we're comparing with uh, with the existing site because this is a cul-de-sac lot. Um, it's got a house on both sides, existing neighborhood, existing homes, and it's going to be super tight. And the only place to stockpile dirt is up here, and that's our access to come in. So I think we're going to have quite a few truckloads of dirt to haul off of this site. So what I'm going to do is um, do that model comparison to get that volume and then feel how many comfortable, how many loads are we comfortable with hauling away as we're excavating because we don't want to overdo it because we need some of that dirt for backfill. All right, so that's it for now in this video. Now we see how the foundation relates to the existing site. And in the next video, we're going to do an excavation uh, for this site. All right, thanks for watching.